In the past seven years, I've spent over $6 million across YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and even LinkedIn, running ads to a number of my online companies. And as you can imagine, in that time, I've learned a thing or two about what works, and more importantly, what doesn't. And so in this video, I wanna share with you the top five online ad hacks that I've learned. Some of these are so effective, they feel too good to be true. But first, if you're new here, my name's John, husband, father, entrepreneur, and founder of adclients.com. And over the past 10 years, I've built multiple online businesses that have generated over $30 million online without having to hustle 24 seven, sacrifice my personal life, or stop doing the things that I love. And now here on this channel, I help other people do the same. The first ad hack is so powerful and has been so profitable for my companies that I am amazed amazed that more people don't know about this. This is something that only works on YouTube when you're running advertisements, but boy is it powerful. Let's imagine over here, okay, this is the, this is the YouTube platform, all right? And we are deciding on the targeting that we want to tell YouTube, show my video ad to these people. Well, we are typically finding targeting options from within the platform. We might try to target some keywords that people are searching for. We might target certain videos that they're watching. We might target certain interests that these people are into, but it's all happening within the YouTube ecosystem. There's a really powerful targeting option where we can reach outside of YouTube, leverage a completely third-party platform with amazing traffic, and we can hit those people back on YouTube. Allow me to explain. There's another platform that I'm sure you're very familiar with, and also the traffic on it we know is really valuable, and that is Google. But if you're familiar with online ads in any way, shape, or form, you'll know that Google traffic is typically quite expensive. What we can do, because Google owns YouTube, they share the same data. Like it or not, that data is being shared. So what we can do is what we call URL-based targeting. When someone goes to Google, and they go to that search bar, and they search for something, this is typically the highest value traffic on the internet. That person wants this thing right now, they're looking for an answer, they're looking for a solution. This is the type of traffic that we want. When they search for something, obviously we've got all these different listings, all these different options, and these are different websites. And every website has a URL. So if this person searching for this clicks on that website and visits it, there is a URL, that's the link that they've actually clicked on. So here's what we can do, and it's really, really powerful, is we can create a YouTube ad campaign. We can select all of the different URLs to different websites that we determine our dream client avatar or the dream customer for us, they would be visiting these types of websites. And we're gonna give all of that information to YouTube, we're gonna give them those web addresses and they are going to create something of an ideal customer avatar. They are gonna determine based on the information they have on their platform, if someone's visiting these websites, they probably act like this person, watch this type of content, search for these types of things, and now we can show ads to these people. It's a highly effective, highly profitable targeting strategy, and it's worked really well for us. But wait, it gets just that little bit better, because we can go even deeper on this strategy, get that little bit extra creative, and we can come up with some really interesting URLs that we could target to find incredible, Customers, imagine this. You've got all of your competitors. They are, they are all selling products. Imagine we want to get closer to the buyers of their products. Imagine we want to create customer targeting profiles based on people that typically interact with a purchase of some kind online. We can go and find all of our competitors, we can go into their funnels, and we can collect the URLs for the pages at the very end of the funnel. Now YouTube's creating a profile based on people that typically work their way through funnels. They're committed to that process. They get to the very end. If you want to go even further, you could purchase your competitors' uh, products and then take the URL of their thank you page. And now we're creating a, a targeting profile based on people that like to buy stuff. We can get login URLs. So if someone has logged into a service or logged into a software, then we create a profile around those people. And if they've logged into something, they're typically a buyer. So the, the opportunity is endless with this and, and it's just so, so powerful. Now the second thing, and this works across all advertising platforms, is that we have to have really good hooks in our copy and in our videos. We've got to say interesting things, we've got to grab their attention in ways that stops the scroll, that stops the skip button, that actually has them staying on our content and consuming what we have. And I've got 10 ways that we use, or 10 hooks 
that we typically go to that helps us to achieve this. The first one is doubt, okay? It's leading in your copy and in your videos by causing the prospect to doubt something that they thought was true or that they're currently attempting, right? An example might be, I stop them in their tracks with an ad where I say, why is it that VSL funnels are so ineffective right now, but people still believe them to be the golden goose for generating clients online? It's like if they were scrolling through their newsfeed and they were currently using VSLs or they're currently building a VSL, they're gonna now have a little bit of doubt over whether that's still the best strategy to be using. And they're hooked to see how this ad ends. The second one is fear. If I can find a way to invoke a little feeling of fear, you know, albeit I'm gonna create some positivity out the other end, but some fear in the beginning, it's gonna stop them in their tracks. I might say, why is it that you are struggling to get any traction on YouTube with your amazing content? It's because it's being buried in amongst the 3.7 million videos uploaded on the platform every single day. So they suddenly have this feeling of, oh my gosh, okay, I am actually a bit nervous and a bit worried about this scenario. I need help to stand out. And of course, the rest of my ad can deliver that. The third one is creating a feeling of authority. And this is one where we would just start the ad immediately talking about our credibility. The ad might start the video now straight away. Say, in the past 12 months, my coaching company has generated over $4 million online. And I wanna share with you the three key things I use to do it. I've established authority immediately and they're hooked with the idea of learning uh, about that. And number four is industry specific. Okay, we're gonna point something out that's currently happening in our industry that they need to be aware of or they're gonna get left behind. I might talk about AI and give an example of how AI is taking over our industry and the way in which we do things and you need to learn how to implement it for your business as well. If I lead with a hook like that, they would be dumb to keep scrolling and potentially be left in the dark. Number five, and this is one that we do like to use quite frequently, it's asking a question. It's launching an ad with a hook that's slightly calmer, but poses a question. It might say something like, why is it that you're finding it so hard right now to fill your calendar? Why is it that every day you wake up and you look at your calendar of prospects to speak to in the day and it's crickets, you have zero uh, people on your calendar? I'm asking questions and that's invoking an emotional response because the question I'm asking is obviously leading them to realize, well, I don't have that thing and that's a pain for me at the moment, which leads us to number six because number six is actually touching on a pain point, okay? We're not doing this to be mean, but a really good hook in any advertisement is to remind the prospect of pain because it's the pain that your product, your service uh, is going to be able to help them solve. So if you were targeting uh, you know, people in the, in the fitness space that are, that are not achieving their current health goals, you might even couple a question with a pain point and say, are you waking up every morning looking in the mirror and, and you're just feeling your body deteriorating? You can see your body deteriorating and you've hit a point right now where you're saying enough's enough, I've got to make a change, I've got to put my health first. I've reminded them of the pain, I've actually coupled that with a question. Because the top tip is if we can combine some of these, that's epic. Number seven is going straight into a lesson. You've probably heard about the importance of providing value in your marketing. We don't want it to just be salesy, we want it to be value driven. Well, this is a, a way in which you can do it. One of the hooks that we often use is diving straight into a training. And, and, it, and it catches people off guard. They're used to seeing advertisements that are gonna try to sell something and suddenly they click play on this ad or they scroll to it and there's training starting immediately. You know, literally the ad might start Hey, real quick, check this out. These are the three things that you need to do to land more clients today. It's like, wow, okay, we're into something. We're into some training. So we go straight into that. Number eight is situational. I'm gonna describe a situation. I'm gonna paint a picture of a scenario that my audience might find themselves in, which at the same time is gonna invoke a little bit of pain. I might say something like, are you fed up of the amount of times you walk down the park with your dog and they are just out of control. You see all of the other dogs and they're calm and collected, they're able to be off the lead and everything's fine and yours is barking at everything and everyone that walks by. It's pulling on the lead, almost pulling you over and it's incredibly embarrassing. And maybe I would continue on with that theme but I'm describing a situation and a scenario that is close to their heart and at the same time is quite painful. Number nine is going straight for the jugular and just creating 
some impact, having a big impactful statement straight away, something quite shocking, something potentially controversial. I might start the ad by saying the worst platform that you could be trying to find clients on is Instagram and here's why. It's a bit shocking, it's quite impactful and it's intriguing. You kind of want to listen on to see where we're going with this. And finally, number 10 is a story focused hook. If we can start an ad where we're really bringing the tone down, it's not as fast paced, we're slowing everything down. I might start the ad and say, look, four years ago, I was really struggling in this area. I felt like this, nothing was working. I eventually found a way to make this thing work. And now let me share with you how that happened. So I'm slowing everything down, I'm sharing my story, and people like listening to that if it's constructed in the right way. Now number three, and I'm gonna help you with this one, is that you need to follow a proven script to create a really good ad. This is the same for YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, it doesn't matter where you're running an ad, you need to be following something of a framework that has been proven. This is part of it, right, having a good hook, but what else do we say? Well, I got you covered, because I've created an amazing free resource called the 60 Second Script. And basically we tell you exactly what to say and do in your ad from start to finish so that in 60 seconds you can have a great video ad ready to run on any platform that can hopefully start getting you more leads and sales. It's my free gift to you. So click the link that's somewhere in the description box or there might be a QR code popping up. Let us know where to send it. We'll get it straight out to you. Now the fourth thing has been incredible for me and I hope it is for you too. Although I want to make something very, very clear. This is not financial advice. You probably shouldn't listen to me. You should absolutely make your own uh, mind up. But what I like to do is when I'm paying for online advertisements, I put it on a credit card. And I put it on a credit card because I understand this idea of good debt. And the idea is I've got the money in the bank that I can put towards running some ads to promote my business. But I would rather put that on a credit card and have the money never leave my account. Let's imagine that I have allocated $1,000. $1,000 as a marketing budget. Now I could run an ad campaign that's pointing to my website or my sales funnel that's hopefully going to make me some sales. Now I can spend on those ads from my bank. It leaves my bank and now I have to just fingers crossed hope that this converts and I can make that money back and top my account back up and hopefully be in a bit of profit. But if I incorporate a credit card in here and I put the, my, my ad spend on my credit card, then I'm able to spend the thousand dollars or two or three, whatever, I'm, whatever my appetite for risk is. And how long do I have to pay off that credit card? Typically 30 days. So I've got 30 days now with that ad spend to do everything I can in this process to make sure that it's profitable so that I can make some money back out the other end. Now let's imagine that with all of those efforts, I spend a thousand and I make two thousand in return. Well, a thousand of that comes over here to pay off my credit card and I've got a thousand pounds in profit. So actually my bank account is going up, not down, and I'm leveraging the credit card to mitigate my immediate financial risk. And that's just one of the benefits. You know what the other benefit is? If I spend from my bank, there's no reward for doing that. Whereas on a credit card, there is a reward for spending. So not only am I leveraging someone else's money, which is already incredible enough, I'm getting points for when I do so. Now I've spent millions and millions and millions on credit cards for ads. And you can see inside of my American Express account, I've got 3.8 million points right now just sat there. I can use that to spend on flights and, and get upgrades to business class and hotels. And it, it's, it's absolutely incredible. I'm now traveling and staying around the world completely for free because I got to borrow someone else's money. It's incredible. But again, this is absolutely not financial advice. I am not telling you to get a credit card. You should look into it and make up your own decision. Now, number five, my advice to you is that you focus on one ad platform to start with. And once you get some results with that, then you start to add the other ones in. If you try to spread yourself too thin in the beginning and run ads on all of these different platforms simultaneously, you're not gonna get a result with any of them, you know? Imagine you're over here and you've got a certain amount of time every day that you can focus on your business. And let's say that you're really distracted and you are focusing on 10 different things every day, right? 10 different ad platforms, 10 different traffic sources. Well then what that means is, you're giving 10% effort to each of these. Nothing great has ever been built on 10% effort. If you're running an ad on YouTube and giving it just 10% and hoping that it takes off, it's not going to. 
Same thing on Facebook, same thing on Instagram, same thing on LinkedIn, same thing on TikTok. And the way I want you to think about this is, let's imagine that this is where you're digging. This is a spade. I know it's an amazing picture of a spade. And then down here is the gold, okay? These are the clients, these are the customers, this is the cash. Well, you know, you've got Facebook here, and you start digging down, you start digging down, it's not taking off quick enough, and so you give up. And then you, you, you uh, spend a bit of time on on TikTok, and then that doesn't quite take off. And then YouTube, you give it a, a, a really good go, but again, you're doing it at the same time as still trying to make Facebook and TikTok work. And so we've got all of these different traffic platforms that you are attempting to make work. None of them are striking gold, right? Whereas if we eliminated the confusion and focused on just one, let's say it's YouTube, well then we're going to inevitably get down into the gold mine. We're gonna land clients, we're gonna get it to work. So my suggestion is focus on one, drive it until it works, and then replicate what worked on that platform over onto the other ones as well. Hopefully you found this helpful. If you'd like to dive deeper into this topic, then my content director here, Pete, put together a video breaking down the 450 video ads that we've created and the biggest lessons we learned so that you can create your own profitable ads as well. Check out that video. Hope to see you in a future one. Take care.